week we are talking about two members of the Gongtaro family. Gomtaro uh, range. So if you're interested in learning more about it, what are you going to use it for? Keep on listening. We will explain it all for you. Um, starting off, this these are a silky brand. So silky saws, they're a Japanese pull saw. So they only cut on the pull stroke. So as Sinead mentioned, this is a Japanese company and they've been making saws for over a hundred years. Yeah. So they have had a lot of practice in making a very good hand saw. <laughs> and today we are featuring the Gomtaro range. So I have the privilege of talking about the Gomtaro fine tooth. So they make a, a large range of saws and they all have different specs and that's because they're designed for different uses and different purposes. So today, I'm going to tell you what the Gomtaro Fine Tooth is designed to do and whether this is the right saw for you. So, the Gomtaro Fine Tooth, as the name suggests, has a smaller tooth than a lot of the other saws. And the reason for this is little teeth tend to go through hard materials much better. So you'll notice if you ever see a builder cutting a piece of wood up with a manual saw, it's always got really little teeth. Carpentry saws always have really fine little teeth. Yes. And that's because dry hardwood, the little teeth go through so much easier. So if you have carpentry wood to cut, this is a brilliant saw. If you use loppers and you want an alternative saw instead of your loppers, so we're talking stuff like, you know, the little finger a centimetre wide up to maybe two inches, yeah. then the fine tooth gold tarot is brilliant. If you have dead wood in a tree, because that's dry again, a variety of sizes, the fine tooth gold tarot is going to be great for that. Oh, yeah. um, if, what else? Oh, fibrous material. Because um, Silky, also with the Gomtari, have a really special tooth style called a Minami tooth, this tooth doesn't catch on fibres. So if you have palm fronds to cut, or if you have bamboo, or any other really stringy sort of material, the fine tooth Gomtari will just slice through it like it's butter. You won't even feel the fibres, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a little bit too much fun. You'll go a little bit crazy on your pruning <laughs> because it's so quick and so easy. And we call you guys happy pruners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Normally end up with the names doing a bit there too. Yeah, <laughs> we love you for it. Yeah, so a really great saw for those uses. Um, and the other important thing with this saw is if you aren't using it, as I said before, an alternative to loppers, it will give a beautiful clean cut to the tree, which is really important. So if you do have specialty trees, trees that you just want to really look after and make sure there's no chance of disease getting into those trees, then the fine tooth gomtaro for those smaller cuts is absolutely brilliant. Yes. Mm. Uh, the Gomtaro Large Tooth. So this is a brilliant general purpose mm. pruning saw. So if you're pruning um, branches that are fresh, that are sappy, mm -hmm. um, or large pieces of branches, you can say about my wrist, to my uh, your arm, you'd be leaning more towards a large tooth saw. Mm. So it just cuts so beautifully. <laughs> feature with the Gomtara is that they have a few different blade tooth styles that are all interchangeable within the handle and scabbard. So another neat feature when you purchase a Gomtara, you have that versatility. Yes. Um, there is another decision you have to make once you've figured out whether you're going for the final large or whether you're going to get both of them, which is highly recommended. <laughs> so another choice you have to decide on is now length of plate. Yes. So in the Gomtara large tooth range, there are five different uh, blade lengths starting from 18 <laughs> centimetres, <Either> <laughs> working up to 300 <laughs> centimetres. So that comes down to what space you're working with, basically. Mm. So if you're working in a branch or you're pruning some bushes that have really, really close branches all together, you mm. would be leaning towards more of a uh, shorter blade saw, mm. so you don't damage Small. those surrounding, um, surrounding limbs, basically, because you yeah. don't want to use very, very tip of that saw because that's mm. where it's, it tends to become a little bit awkward and things start to not feel narrower. as comfortable. So yeah, you've got a narrower. higher chance of damaging it. Yeah, so mm. you whether you yeah, twist it, break it, whatever. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um and you need up. So yeah, I have three options of blade length with the fine tooth gold tarry. So um I really don't know why they didn't give five choices with the fine tooth, but it is what it is. <laughs> you get three choices. So 
It comes in a 300 millimeter long blade, a 270 and a 240. And exactly like Sinead said, it all depends on the space you've got. So if you've got lots of space between your branches, then go long blade because the longer the blade, the faster your cut is yes, going to be. because you've got more teeth ripping. Exactly. Ripping, cutting. cutting through the wood, yeah. The less times you have to put the saw back and forth through the cut, the faster it's going to be. Yes. So yeah, if you've got lots of space, go the 300. If you don't have lots of space, then in the fine tooth, you would want the 240. Yeah. Um, because as Sinead said, you don't want to be just using the tip of that blade. You want to start your cut at the handle. So pick a blade that's appropriate to, you know, we're talking on average, obviously we're not going to know exactly, but on average, what sort of space you're going to have to work with. Yeah. yeah, I hope that's made it an easier decision. We're going to chuck some specs up, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to chuck some specs mm. up and I hope that's made a very simple answer of what you want, live tooth, fine tooth and blade length. <laughs> and we're going to do some demos too, so you're going to see what it's actually like. When yes, it and we'll do that right now for you. Okay. Okay, so what I want to show you first up is we often say to people, how big is the branch you're cutting? Because if you use a large tooth saw on a small branch, it's going to jump and vibrate and rip and tear. So I thought this is a perfect example. Let's show you. So this one here is a large tooth gomtaro and it is a 240 length. So this branch here is probably a centimeter wide. So I want to show you what will happen if you try and cut it with a large tooth. Can you see that? it's really ripping and tearing and sort of jumping out of the cut. Now, if my hand was here, there's a high chance that's gonna jump out and land on my hand. So dangerous to begin with, but oh, it also bites like that. So it makes it difficult because it's biting into the wood. And then if you have a look at what happens there, it's sort of ripped and torn. Now, obviously I started and stopped. So, you know, I was making it probably look worse than necessary, but we'll do it again. See the jump there? Oopsie, pull out the cut. See what it's done? So that is what will happen if you use a large tooth saw on a small branch. Now this is the fine tooth gomtaro. This is actually a little bit longer, a 270, but it's got the little tooth. So if we use that, see instantly how it's not jumping and vibrating, it just glides in and so quick as well. Now obviously I can't sort of show you how nice that would be because it got ruined by the large tooth. So I'm just going to cut it again from underneath so it tidies that up. But I mean, it's just so nice to use. It's beautiful in comparison. It, it really is, is kind of exciting. Anyway, I'm gonna do it again from the top to show you the nice clean cut. Beautiful, no tearing, no splitting. And if Sinead comes around there, you can just see it's the most beautiful finish. So if you have limbs about this size up to about this size here, that is green, that is live, that is sappy. The fine tooth gomtaro is just going to work a treat. Now I'm going to cut this one here as well, here, so that you can see what it's like on a slightly larger limb. Again, always start your cut at the handle. So I'll just do that again for you. For some reason I always get stage fright the first time I do it. <laughs> and again. Okay, so I'm going to swap that and use the large tooth again on this limb now. Now see how instantly it's pulling at it? Whoopsie, pull out a cut. There you go. So not too bad on a larger size like this, but this would be about the smallest I'd ever want to cut with a large tooth gomtaro. Um, in my opinion, I'd even be going a bit bigger than this is my starting point. So if on average this is the size branch you're cutting, then the fine tooth is going to be beautiful. But if it's larger than that, then we're going to do the large tooth. So Sinead's going to show you both of these saws on a bigger limb so you can see how they cut. <laughs> so I have the large tooth gong here and I'm cutting a large piece of timber. So. Beautiful. So then we're going to jump across to a finer tooth saw and I'll show you what it feels like. It'll just... So you can see here that this size um, blade length and this size tooth can easily cut through a branch this size. However, when you look at the blade closely, you can see that the the, it's clogged up the teeth and this is because the branch is too sappy and too fresh for this particular tooth size um, and I will demonstrate on a large tooth saw 
on something this um, this fresh and this sappy, and I'll show you the difference. So you can see that it it cut through that branch a lot quicker because it's got more. It's not clogging up. The teeth haven't clogged up the blade. So you can see here it's and it's even a shorter blade, blade, but it was still quicker. Yeah, exactly. So you can still see that it's a little bit, it's still got a little bit of wood chips, but if I swipe it back through, it cleans it all out. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. Oh, that's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, that is all from us this week, sadly. Yes, but next week we're back and we're doing a video on how to use a silky prop, a silky handsaw properly, and how to look after it. So watch out for that one.